Hey, what's up everybody? It is Kellen here from Start Your Systems and welcome to our first look at MotoGP 20 from Milestone SRL, SRL again. Another great game put out by them in the MotoGP series and a lot of cool things to talk about with this series. So I'm gonna jump right into it. Uh, first of all, this is the main page and the reason I'm starting here is because there's a couple things I wanna talk about. First of all, they have this awesome historic mode uh, with a lot of different things that you can do. Like look at all these old riders you can play as, Casey Stoner, Wayne Gardner, Valentino Rossi. You can purchase them with uh, some of uh, these tokens that you earn throughout the game. And then there's these challenges you can do to unlock them as well, like play as Valentino you know, Rossi on a Repsol Honda, um, and this is at Aragon, or you could go to Mugello and uh, play as him on a Repsol Honda. You could go here and play as McDoin at Saxon Ring, like all these cool historic things, which has been a part of the game for a while. But one thing they added to the game this year was a vast, they already had some of it, but this is vastly dynamic, improved, whatever you want to call it customization mode you can start with your rider and, and like there's so much you can customize from you know knee slider colors to what suit that he wears like you could choose between alpine stars and dainese and things like that but there's also online content that people can upload and then there's a really in-depth helmet editor that like i already worked on one but you can see this helmet here like put stars on it um like little dots and different helmets and american flag like you can literally like customize all of this it's crazy how in-depth the customization is um with the helmet editor uh you can even make your own numbers i've tried and it's pretty tough but it's kind of you know similar layout to use what you see with a lot of these games where you get to like kind of just go through all these different screens and edit your own numbers and create them why that's important is because you do have a number that ends up on the bike and this is new too as far as i know this is a team editor. You can create your own team in MotoGP, Moto2, or Moto3. Um, and so like I could start here in Moto3, grab this bike, and you can change uh, the livery, two different liveries that it comes with. Um, and then you can choose like literally the colors of basically every part of the bike so that you can make like your literal own custom team. You can edit the suit. There's different patterns that you can choose for the suits. And this is, like full-blown making your own team that you can have riders ride for. And then there's stickers that you can put on the bike or like a butt patch that you can put on your sticker. You've probably seen it in MotoGP before. But one of my favorite things with this game that I really, really enjoy is the like really in-depth career mode that they have. So not only do you have to hire personnel to work for you to improve your status within the, the team that you're on, help you sign contracts like you can search for contracts by you know seeing who's interested um, you can see that these teams are not interested in me currently you kind of have to like work up to that uh, but then you sign with certain teams like the moto 3 team i've signed for i have a personal manager i can choose to fire him um, and hire on someone else but you can see it costs an annual salary and every month that annual salary gets taken out um, by your credit in the upper right hand corner so you can see my income uh, versus my expenditures and, and like it gives you like total tallies on what your your wages and stuff are like um, and You can see your, your current contract stuff like that your entourage that you have um, Your personal manager and your analysts and stuff like that and You have a technical staff as well that has different engineers analysts and you can tell them Kind of like what you want them to work on and again here you can hire and fire these people and it all leads to this research and development where you tell I want five staff working on upgrading the engine. I want three staff working on upgrading the, the frame. Um, you know, eventually I'll be able to work on aerodynamics and electronics. We have a research department. So like I've only delegated so many staff to so many different parts right now, but I can move them to research if I want. Like that is so crazy, so in depth. I, I, I love it. Like that is really damn cool. Um, so obviously you guys probably came here for the gameplay. Um, you can see I already have some development areas that I've been working on um, that should be completed in a couple weeks. So we'll just advance to there and through there. And now we are going to the Red Bull GP of the Americas. So the way I have it set it up, set up right now, um, let's just turn, uh, I'll leave qualifying on. I have FP1 qualifying and then it just goes straight to the race with the way I set it up, but like I, I could turn this on or off. Um, you can see what the info means about each one. Um, and it tells you like what the weather is gonna be for each one as well. So this is 
uh, like crazy in depth. I can't believe how in depth and intuitive all this is. It's mind blowing to me because we come from motocross games, which honestly don't have this research and development side of it or, or anything like that. It's like, just, you know, start the game, show it to me, let's play it. Um, and, and this part of the game is so fun for me to be able to basically like be a team manager and rider at the same time. And, uh, hopefully because this is a milestone game and obviously they work on the supercross and MXGP games, some of this Welcome stuff eventually may carry over. I don't know that for sure, but you can see right here, it's kind of proof in the pudding what they can do. And I'm sure eventually they will, uh, work up to that. So a couple things you can do once you're here and I'm going to make sure my riding aids are basically set up. I still have semi-automatic transmission on, um, what you can do is you can run tests, which I'm going to run one test and then I'll go to qualifying. Uh, you can talk to your track engineer and be like, Hey, uh, I'm having trouble on corners. Uh, my handling's a little bit messed up. I have some high response and they're like, yeah, sure. Whatever we can do something. And it, you know, they're like, let's change it. Applying same setup changes like that. Oh my gosh. That, that is real. Like that in real life, you go to your, uh, crew chief and say, I'm having troubles here. Do you have any advice? And they say, let's throw a new setup on the bike and then you try it. Like that is so freaking cool. I love that aspect of this game. Um, but let's run a development test. Uh, let's just do a distance analysis. And what you do is you say mount recommended tires, fill recommended level uh, to the, you know, with the tank and then go to the, the track. The mechanics are taking the bike out of the pit and the right and so i'm still pretty new to the game i haven't like fully picked up on everything just yet which in turn means i well i know this track but i don't know every single track which is gonna take me a little bit to learn and so that's why i still have the uh like the rider line thing on that shows you which is the ideal trajectory on the track so apologies that that probably looks super noobish of me that i have it but just for my sake i kind of wanted to have it so that i could feel a little bit more comfortable with the gameplay itself like yeah start breaking here get on the brakes and another thing about these games that i didn't talk really that much about at the beginning of this is you can um adjust your rider's like styling like you can pick and choose whether or not he leans farther into corners with his elbow or his head or if he's like a pretty standard straight up and down rider um kind of old school style and that that part of it's really cool too and something that i've seen people talk about when it comes to like supercross games that they want added in because it's it's true like everybody has their own style not only in these like moto gp races and stuff like that but in supercross and motocross of course everybody has their own style everybody whips the bike harder or um you know scrubs a certain way or corners a certain way and you know sits for further forward further back on the bike things like that so um little things like that are you know stuff that i'm definitely really really interested in moving forward with the moto side of things Oop. And another thing that they really keyed in on with these games, because it's true to real MotoGP, is you can mess with your um, electronics. So I've turned my traction control way down, turned EBS down, and I'm going to put power up to 2 to finish this test because I have enough fuel to do it. But once you put your power up to 2, and this is in the bottom right-hand corner that you can see me messing with it in. Once you put your power up to 2, you got to start watching your fuel really closely. Like I, uh, at the Qatar race that I did, um, my fuel almost ran out because I wasn't watching the fuel. I was on power two and I had like two laps to go and I had a half um, tank of fuel left or not half, uh, 0.5 laps of tank on the fuel load left. Gosh, I can't speak right now. And so what I ended up doing was turning the power down to zero and then like coasting into corners and stuff like that. And it eventually worked. Like I eventually saved enough fuel, but then, like that's just another level of holy moly cow they go so in detail in depth with it that like it's almost to a degree unbelievable how much effort and time they put into making this stuff feel pretty authentic now the gameplay itself i will say like it it feels really good i like it oh finally had a crash and fortunately i still have rewind on um feels really good and i really like it for sure but i and i don't know like i've never ridden a moto gp bike so i can't say this for sure but it does feel like a little arcade-ish like it doesn't feel like i'm fully simulating what it feels like to lean into a corner and and things like that i i don't know it i'm probably wrong like it's probably actually fairly close and i'm sure someone will tell me like no actually this is totally what it feels like 
you know, leaning into a corner or what it's supposed to look like on a MotoGP bike. But from my perspective, it just looks a little, little off. Not bad, but just a little bit off. And there are different uh, camera modes. So I could go like on board here. I think there's a, a helmet mode. I thought there was. Yeah, there we go. So I'll just go on board here for a second, kind of take a listen. Missing my apexes of my corners so bad. Enough of that. So I have difficulty on it's 50%. Uh, I think it goes up to like 125% or something like that. So the AI is fairly easy, and you'll notice in the race that like on straightaways and corner exits, like they're fairly comparable, but on corner entries, they're terrible. You can kind of already see that in some of this gameplay here. Um, but I, I just, again, I'm still learning the game. This is only in my like second Grand Prix weekend that I'm even trying in the game. So I'm just trying to like get fully used to it before I start really up in the AI, but eventually I will. And I actually do plan on doing more videos on this because I've wanted to get into more street bike, car racing, other games like that on the channel because that's what it was meant to be from the beginning. Like it's great that motocross wise it's done really well over the years, but uh, initially like we called it Start Your Systems because it was meant to be motorsports in general. So sorry to you that uh, are only here for the motocross content. Uh, I, tr I promise there's going to be more of that to come, but I like getting stuff like this on the channel too because it's it's stuff that I am genuinely interested in. Like I'm not just a moto fanatic only. I watch Formula One. I watch MotoGP. I basically watch like any form of motorsport you can think of, and and actually do enjoy it. So when I get to kind of play it too. Oh man, that was a very very minor cut in that corner. Oh well, invalid lap. So not past the distance analysis because I didn't get the second lap done, whatever. But normally what happens is you finish these analysis the and what, if you go in here now, what you would see is it gives you research data points based on how good you were. So if I got 351 research data points for being perfect, which I wasn't, I was in the, I think, good range or excellent range. Um, you can apply those to researching the motorcycle and getting it better. And, and like, it's very, very in depth. It's crazy how in depth it is. So, um, yeah. So we'll skip to Q1. Is over, but you can see, I mean, I did two laps and I was still boxes, better be than all the AI. But uh, that's beside the point. Here we are. Actually, now that I think about it, I may actually start doing these on my Twitch streams because I've been doing a lot of Twitch streaming lately. Um, I think people will enjoy just kind of a walkthrough on the Twitch stream side of things. All right, so let's go to track. Uh, I'll just do flying start, so I'm not sitting here all day. Yeah, you can see time of day has changed and weather has changed because it's a new day. So again, dynamic weather, that's always a plus when you have it in racing games like this. All right, so off we go. Try to get our qualifying in. Power 2, TCS down to 1. Let's go UBS 1 as well. Actually go UBS 0. It's turn 1 at Austin. Coda is nuts going up the hill like that. Aaron's trying to step out on me because I turned tracks control all the way off, but it's good for blowing through corners and stuff like that because it's not trying to hiccup me by saying, hey, you're gripping a little bit too much. And of course, so I'm racing Moto3 and ideally you want to be in MotoGP. It's kind of, I guess you, to compare this to Motocross and Supercross, uh, this would be like racing the EMX 125 class or EMX 250 class in Europe before racing MX2 and then MXGP, or it's you know racing Loretta Lins before racing the 250 Pro Motocross and Supercross series, and then you know racing 450s and stuff like that. Um, so the goal is to eventually work your way up to that, which I would hope 
is something that they try to carry over into their moto games eventually, their dirt bike games, I should say, um, because that'd be awesome to start out at, as an amateur and become a pro or start out as a very low level pro and work your way up to being a really, really good pro, which not just like racing in the pro ranks, but you know, doing stuff to get you money like as a privateer and stuff like that. I, I like that aspect of career modes and it's more in depth, which is why I'm thoroughly enjoying this one, even though I'm awful at MotoGP games. Oh, sliding the rear end a little bit. Kind of got a little kick out there. You can see the front and rear tire wear, which I have on realistic. So you spin that rear tire, you wear down the rear tire a little bit. And right now, just for learning purposes, I have joint brakes on, but you can separate the brakes between front and rear, which is, I think, you know, really cool and pretty dynamic to MotoGP racing and such. All right, cross the line, 225, eight. That should be good enough, so we'll go ahead and return to the pit. Yes. We're back from Bam, we can management. Um, can it, oh, I just skipped the race. Skip to session. Confirm That's the end of and the pull and position. So we'll do a race Hello, now, which I think is supposed in. to be five laps. It was a long weekend for the Moto Tree riders, but finally the showdown and, is here. Uh, we are coming to you oh, from the starting grid. There's just a few minutes to go before this is the race fuel begins. four laps. Check consumption. So I can change my tires now. We'll go medium compound. We'll go with the fresh front and a fresh rear and fuel. I always like to fill up fuel just a little bit so I'm not on the limit. And we're good there. So we'll go to track. Oh no, he's gonna let me choose it beforehand. Never mind. But we're good. Got fresh tires, we're good While to the go. Race officials are waving. And we are racing in Coda. Turn the power down to one though. Already getting past. See, they're so good off the line and stuff like that, but they're awful on corner entry, except for right now. They seem to be somewhat decent. Oh, running a little wide. Oh man, getting swarmed around. Oh man. Oh. Oh, I don't know how we did make contact. If we did, then it was very light because I don't know how I didn't go down right there. And you definitely can go down making contact with people. Like I've my limited time playing I've already been clipped once and just taken straight down and it is nuts how fast oh, you go down just kind of swing around the outside of these guys try to get a drive I'm into that corner a little too deep carry the speed down the hill and then watch look at how, how early they break like I can start breaking here and still make the corner easily, but they like they they like coast into the corner really dramatically. It seems like <laughs> there's like a group of people right behind me. I haven't figured out yet if like drafting works, which I know like you can slipstream in MotoGP because like guys do it all the time. They get like right up behind people. I haven't figured out if that works yet. These guys all seem to have more higher powered bikes than I do, or at least they're on a higher power degree right now. I'm just trying to, at the beginning here, save fuel and maybe I can put in a charge late. Uh, ran deep. Got to be really careful under the brakes so you'll easily tuck a front wheel. I can't decide if I like Coda or not. Like. I'm really happy that we have this type of track in the U.S. where it's like a, a anybody can go race. They have F1, they have IndyCar, they have MotoGP, they have you know World Endurance. Like they have a lot of different really big name race series. Race at Coda, which is Circuit of the Americas. I don't know if I've mentioned like, what that abbreviation is for yet, but um, it's in Austin, Texas, and like. 
part of me is like, man, Watkins Glen and Indianapolis are these great classic tracks that they should be used for F1 and MotoGP and, and things like that. But the other part is like, well, it's nice to have a new updated track that these guys can race on instead of having to race the same old tracks all the time. But I don't know. I like it's a it's an interesting track for sure. Like, whoa. it's uh, you know it's got a lot of cool elements built into it. But part of me is like, I wish it was maybe I guess like more natural then. Like, it seems like they kind of force some corners and different things like that. So you can see right there, top right-hand corner, I just got a penalty for cutting that inside of the corner, and it adds um, two-tenths of a second to my total race time. And I also just got clipped right there, and I got some light damage. So again, just adding that realistic factor where it's like, you got to be so careful around these people that like, any little touch, any little mistake, the bike gets worn down, like things like that all the time. All right, let's drive it in deep here and start making some moves. Ah, went off the track again. Can't seem to get those corner entries just right. Now these guys have got a great drive on me and they're gonna blow by me. Ah, uh, oh, well, maybe not. Let's try slipstream here. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't seem like it really worked all that well. These guys are, I only up the difficulty 10% for this race, and these guys are hard. Like having a super focus just to actually race with them. Drive it in deep here, try to make a pass into fourth. Nice, worked out. That's gonna get me back though. Well, maybe not, I'm holding them out. Two more laps to go, let's see if I can make this happen. Try to go up there and get this lead away from these guys. Suzuki, Masia, and I don't know who's leading. Starting to use a lot of fuel though, just to try to run with these guys. Oh, oh, oh. that was a little bit too much. All right, let's turn the power down because I'm using too much fuel. I just used like three laps worth of fuel in one lap of the race. <laughs> I guess I could wick it up towards the end, but let's try to make some passes on these guys with a little less fuel usage on the power radio. Radio ratio. Gosh, I seriously can't speak right now. This is a problem I do this with doing it late at night. All right, that corner was a little better, but still lost a lot of time to the front group. Seemed to just get off the corners better. That's something I'm gonna have to learn. It probably also doesn't help that I'm on like not a very good bike, and I haven't upgraded it very much yet either. So these guys are just gonna blow by me on the straightaways. But then I'll outbreak them into the corner by long ways. Man, the front three are like having a battle right now. It's Foggia up there as well. I'm glad that this is turning out to be like a good close race. I was gonna be well annoyed if it was another walk away like I had at LaSalle. Come on, hold it on. There it is. Just hooked up. Oh, got that corner. Great. I'd send it in here for the lead. Damn, I just couldn't get it off of that corner. So 
for the power up just to try to stay with these guys on the straightaways because it's just miserable trying to outduel them to outbreak them again in the turn one. Oh, going for the lead. Oh, he like stood back on the gas. Ah, oh, momentarily got the lead. Nice cut under there. Both got around me. This is like so. This probably looks crazy unrealistic, like how close we're all racing and, and that this is <laughs> like still a close race at the end. Um, this actually is not that uncommon in Moto3, Moto2, Moto GP. Like these guys, it, it's seriously some of the best racing you'll ever watch if you get into this sport because it is constant battles all the time, nonstop going after each other. Like, like block passing, I guess is what you would call it. It's it's insane how often these guys are like really close all throughout the race battle. MotoGP is obviously the one I watch the most, and it's it can be ridiculous. Oh, I just saw the leader Suzuki looking back there. It's kind of funny. Ah, man, these bikes are just killing me on the straightaways. I got that. 0.5 second penalty that I'm going to have to adhere to. Uh, too deep. So the key with MotoGP is corner speed for sure. And what you really want to focus on is like getting off the brake mid corner and just letting whatever speed you still have kind of flow through like just don't there should be no hesitation or anything like that it should just be one fluid motion through the corners all the way through on the brakes ease and back on the throttle it's definitely like a learned skill it's not something that i know anything about because i've never raced it or really watch it all that much and go for the lead in the last turn but it doesn't matter because I have that penalty so I just want to try to get as far up as I can maybe finish second I'll take the proverbial win but I'll still finish second I mean it's not terrible while the riders complete their victory lap got my penalty marked in there the Moto3 race. got my top 15 goal taken care of and I'm still the championship leader works for me And my team is this Real of Aven Aventia, Arizona 77, which I'm the only person that scored points for them so far. So, yeah. This is an excellent result for both him and his team, giving them hope for the following races. So the team's super excited because I'm not supposed to be even a championship contender or a race winner or anything like that. And so, holy cow, I finished on the podium. Yeah, baby. And let's go hug the mechanics. Thanks, mechanics. You guys are the best. Go over here, hug these two mechanics, tell them that they should buy some new sunglasses because they look the exact same. Maybe tell the other mechanics that they should buy new sunglasses as well. And get uh, the general people excited because those don't look like my mechanics at all. But then it tells you your qualifying and objectives and race objectives and how many credits you get. And uh, yeah, contract status is secure. So I think that's actually like persona points or something like that and here's the credits you get so i got 5580 more credits to help pay my bills holy cow so my contract searches i have new teams in moto 2 that are interested which is cool moto 3 teams that are interested looks like just about everybody and i can start a negotiation but i'll save that for another video um and then in here there's probably new people available so yeah like i can upgrade and get better people that aren't a c plus grade or what have you but yeah this is uh this kind of it let's go to customization real quick just so i can show this to you guys um so this is riding style that i was talking about so i have body out but you could do old school or shoulders out or elbows on the ground or centered or balanced so again i have body out and then you can do breaking leg yes or no i do yes which is like it sticks the legs out on corner entry and then feet at start you can have both feet down right foot left foot um, I just go left foot. I do two fingers for braking. You do four. You could do one like that. So, so much detail. So much detail. You don't get that in every game. And uh, super awesome. So, yeah, when we come back, we'll, uh, I guess, take on Termas.
the Argentinian Grand Prix in a couple weeks. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys stopping by watching our first look video on MotoGP 20. If you have any more questions, head to the comment section below and be sure to ask them. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.